In this video, we're going to learn how to create some inline icons that have multiple colors within them. Now, these aren't going to be full color graphics necessarily. That is what would be like a linked image. Uh, instead, these are going to be uh, an augmentation of some previous techniques that we've discussed in previous episodes, which you should be familiar with. Uh, and if you haven't seen those episodes, I do highly recommend that you watch those before you go into this, uh, because we're going to be building off of some of the techniques that we learned there. So without further ado, let's go. As we've discussed in previous episodes, you're going to need to use the browser-based app IcoMoon in order to create a font that has a set of unique icons that you would like to use in your project. And each of those icons has to have a ligature assigned to it, uh, which is basically just a keyword. And it can be any string of characters that, is, uh, that are uh, longer than two or three characters. In this case, to make it very simple and plain English for myself, I have just chosen all caps words like target, bank, players, and so on. Now in InDesign, I've created a paragraph style called card text. Now let's look at the grep styles that are in this paragraph style. The first is a style called all icons. And in that character style, all I've done is assign the custom font that I created in IcoMoon and assigned it to the text string that you can see in this overlaid tooltip on the screen right now. Let's take a closer look at that keyword list so you can read it a little bit more easily. Uh, here you can see all the ligatures that I assigned in that font map, um, and they're, they are divided by vertical bars, and grep interprets those as an or command. So essentially what I'm telling InDesign to do is apply this character style to the uh, particular set of characters combined together, target, or bank, or players, and so on. For technical reasons, I've had to also apply a, a slash s command around the icons that I want to have a capsule character style. Uh, so that would be earth, water, wind, fire, plant, and electricity. Basically the last couple of uh, ligatures here. You'll see what this looks like when we actually start laying this out. So let's uh, keep on moving. Now I want to create a new grep style that applies to these last five keywords. I'm just copying and pasting them from a plain text editor. And I'm back in InDesign now, and I'm going to create a new grep style. Uh, I'll call that new character style that I'm applying to it resource icons, just for my own uh, convenience so I can remember what it is. Um, and uh, for now, I'm just going to leave the attributes clear just uh, so I can get to pasting the actual keywords that I need to insert into this uh, text string. Um, and I'm just going to paste it here. Uh, now, these keywords are the same as what's at the end of the all icons text string. Um, so InDesign is first going to apply the all icons character style to whatever text I've told it to. And then it will apply the resource icons character style to this particular set of keywords. Um, and so any instance of wind or fire or plant is going to have both of those character styles applied to it. Um, and hopefully there's no conflicts between them. And I've set this up uh, this way with like a parent character style and a child character style. Uh, so it's a little bit easier for me to edit in the future. I'm kind of future-proofing this. I don't want to have to edit each individual keywords character style one at a time, at, or at least uh, as little as possible. So let's keep on going. So what exactly are the attributes into the resource icons character style? Essentially, it's just an underline using a new type of line that has a rounded corner. We created this in the previous episode of on creating capsule keywords. So you can look at that previous video on how to do that. For now, I am sort of randomly choosing a uh, weight and an offset and uh, the color black, just so I can tell what's going on when I apply this character style. It's essentially just so I can adjust the base lines and, and stuff like that. Um, so this is what it looks like when I've typed in a couple of random keywords here, uh, plant, earth, and electricity. Now, this is never going to be 100% perfect the first time you do it. So uh, here I am just going to change the color swatch of the underline to something a little bit brighter so I can uh, see the relative height and how much I need to offset it and that kind of thing. Now it's time to create a new character style that will be applied to my plant icon. And I'm doing this uh, step by step here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm making it 
a child of the resource icons character style, so it'll inherit any of the attributes from the resource icons character style. Um, and the only thing that I'm applying to the plant character style is that the underline is turned on and the color has been changed to green. That is the color of the underline has been changed to green. I haven't changed any of the character uh, attributes or anything like that. Now I can go into the paragraph style for my card text, create a new grep style that calls for the plant character style and apply it to the keyword plant. Ah, but in this case, I need to add spaces before and after the keyword plant so that it will apply uh, the underline. Basically, uh, the way these uh, underlines work, I need to have enough room around a character in order to have that line show up, which results in this sort of capsule shape rather than a perfect circle. You may need to do some adjustments uh, as you work with your own icons. But the nice thing about this is that because I've applied a different uh, character style to the individual word plant, it separates from the rest of the other icons. You'll notice that there's one continuous capsule that surrounds uh, the other two icons that I had on this line of text. Uh, that will be fixed as soon as I start creating some of the new character styles and applying them to the other resources. Uh, essentially, this is going to be the same process, but I'm going to speed things up a little bit here, uh, just creating the grep styles first and then uh, and creating the new character styles that the greps call for. Um, but I'm not going to make any of the new attributes just yet. I'm just going to speed through this whole part here. Now that I have my complete list of character styles in my character styles palette, I can make individual adjustments just like I could with any other normal character style. But in this case, the only thing I'm tweaking is the color swatch that I've assigned to the underline and adjusting some tints here and there. I'll do this for each one of the character style icons that's assigned to the individual resource. And then when the paragraph style is fully functional, you'll be able to type in these keywords and have InDesign automatically replace them with the uh, icons that you've set with the character styles that you've decided that they should have. Uh, and you can do this for any type of icon you like, changing up the underlying uh, color, uh, the weight, the, how tall it is, that sort of thing. It's pretty cool and very powerful. Now let's explore this a little bit more deeply. I feel like this earth icon looks a little bit too small compared to the compared to the other icons. So I can make some adjustments perhaps to the character style if I if I wish, uh, but that will result in the actual capsule, the, the underline also extending horizontally. So I won't do that. Instead, I'll go to the advanced character formats and start messing around with scale a little bit. Now I could adjust the horizontal scale, but it will result in the same issue that we had before. The horizontal scale of the character will affect whether or not the uh, capsule will appear and also will affect the overall width of that capsule. And I don't want to do that. I want all of the capsules to be basically the same width. So instead I can adjust the vertical scale. Um, and for now, let's call it 100% and start tweaking things up and down. And you can see the character getting a little bit taller, a little bit taller relative to the baseline. Um, now, because of that, I need to adjust the baseline. Um, and that would be the uh, little field that's just below this one. Um, if we make some adjustments there, it will affect the underlying style that, uh, that I've applied here. Uh, it's a balancing act that you have to do with some of these little tweaks. Uh, for the time being, let's call this vertical scale uh, pretty satisfactory at about 160%. Uh, and start making some adjustments to the baseline to compensate for that additional height. As you can see, the underline now has shifted down about uh, a few points uh, along with the character, which means I need to adjust the offset of the underline attribute to compensate for that a little bit. Uh, again, this is going to be a lot of noodling, fiddly, back and forth stuff as you get things just right for your particular project. It's never going to be 100% right the first time, so be prepared for these kinds of tweaks that you have to make kind of on the fly. Going a step further, you can make uh, changes to the color that's applied to the character itself as opposed to the underline. Um, in this case, I've made all of the resource icons white on a color, but I'm not going to keep it that way because I like the idea of having a duotone set of icons that really pop off of the background and distinguish themselves from these stark black, otherwise functional icons that I'm using in some of this card text. Let's fast forward through some of my development process here uh, as I choose different colors uh, to pop off of the background of each of these capsules, making sure that I keep 
uh, contrast a priority throughout this entire process. So on plants, for example, I chose a yellow, but I really tinted that yellow very, very brightly so it can uh, contrast against the green. Uh, on the water icon, I chose a very, very dark purple as a background. Under the fire icon, uh, I tried to keep that red as starkly different from the orange as possible, choosing a lighter tint of orange uh, so that the contrast would still be maintained. Uh, under the wind icon, I did the same thing, keeping the icon itself white, but also choosing a darker blue as the background rather than a uh, sort of a tinted gray. Uh, also making some adjustments to that cloud to make it a little bit bigger and fill out its capsule space a little bit more, again, without uh, harming the offsets and balancing that I've adjusted earlier. And that's pretty much it. Hey, did you know that Patreon subscribers will actually get these files that I've created here so that you can explore all of the weird little tweaks that I've made to this uh, grep style and all the other functions that I've added to it? Yep, it's true. So go to patreon.com slash Daniel Solis uh, and you'll find all of these assets plus many more. Hello, hello. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to download more stuff and more content, uh, you can find it over in the Patreon at the link below. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.